Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm very excited to be back with six more nice, great looking, easy to make, beautiful farmhouse home decor. So let's get started. Our first project for today is very simple using some window clings and a pumpkin sign from Dollar Tree. I have shown a project similar to this in the past using the pizza pan, but today I'm going to show you how you can take one of these large, thankful and blessed pumpkin signs from Dollar Tree and change it to add the wording from some of the window clings. So once I removed the metal leaf, because we are going to use that again. I'm just taking a scraper here and scraping off the glitter from the lettering. Then I'm going to remove the hanger and save that. We are going to put that back on at the end. So now that we have a nice smooth surface, we'll wipe it down, get any last little bits of glitter. And then I love Waverly's chalk paint in the color pumpkin. I am running out of it, so I am adding some pumpkin orange um, acrylic paint from Walmart and I'm gonna mix these. And I did have to do, um, I think two or three coats just to cover up that white lettering. But um, I like to do all my work usually on the front so that the backside stays nice and clean and gives a nice clean finished look. While that's drying, I'm going to take my moss chalk paint and just go over this metal leaf one time just to get rid of that shiny metal color and bring it more into the farmhouse colorings. Now I could still see a little bit of the lines on the pumpkin, so I'm just going over those with my pencil because then I will take a orangish brown paint and just lightly make those three sections again on our pumpkin. So I'm just gonna take a small brush and just highlight the outside and then that middle section as well. Now Dollar Tree and even like Dollar General and Walmart sometimes have some really nice inexpensive options for wording, this is another great way to make wording on signs if you don't have a Cricut. I just cut out the words, home is where you smell pumpkin spice, and I'm going to just first put a layer of matte finish Mod Podge, and then once I have that spread out, I'm going to start at the bottom with the word spice. I'm gonna put a little bit of water um, just to help it adhere really well, and um, just put the wording now onto the center of the pumpkin. The nice thing about the Mod Podge and the water is you are able to move the words around until you get them exactly where you want them. You can see here I'm pressing out some extra Mod Podge that was underneath. You can do that as well with your finger. You have a little bit of time just to work all of that out. Then set that aside to dry. I'm taking this plaid um, harvest color ribbon. Uh, this was from Michaels. And again, I love that it has the orange and the teal and I'm just tying a bow here. The great thing about wire edged ribbon is you can really fluff it and get it to be the size and the shape that you want. So once I had the uh, bows the size I wanted, I just cut the tails and then I will end up dovetailing those a little bit just to give a little more character to our bow. Another fun thing to do is to layer bows. So I have these small little burlap bows. I'm going to layer that right on top of my larger bow that I made. And then here you can see I did flip up the tails so that they wouldn't cover up the wording and just go ahead and glue that 
to the top center of your pumpkin. And then we will add that green leaf back in, making sure that it's not covering up any wording. And then the last step will be to add the jute twine hanger back to the back of the sign. And here's how the finished product look. I just love how you can take two $1 items and make something that looks so much more high end. DIY number two is one I've been wanting to make for a while. I'm going to use two of the carvable pumpkins, the gather sign, and three packs of five gallon paint stir sticks. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out my nine sticks and then I have three one gallon sticks I'm gluing to the back to put them all together into a sign. The great thing about using paint sticks for making signs is you can do as many or as few as you want to make the size sign that you want. So here you can see I'm using my antique wax, brushing it on, getting in all those little cracks and crevices, and then we'll wipe away the excess to have the nice dark stained wood look and make sure to go around the edges as well. You may also want to do the back so that has more of a finished look. Now I'm taking two of these carvable pumpkins and with my saw, it's great because these have a nice line so you just saw on that and they are hollow on the inside so they do cut apart pretty easily. And we want three halves is what we want for this project. Now I'm going to paint my three pumpkins three different colors. This first one I'm going to use my light gray chalk paint which is called mineral and these are pretty porous so I think the gray I needed to use two coats to cover the orange but on my other ones I think I only used one coat again I'm going to take some of that orange acrylic paint and add some of my white chalk paint just to get a little softer of an orange more of a farmhouse country orange I guess I guess you'd call it peach maybe but I liked how the color turned out if you can't find the exact color paint you want, just try your hand at mixing colors and usually you can find somewhere close to what you're wanting. I wanted to tone down the lagoon a little bit, so again, I added some white chalk paint to that to get more of a softer teal for my third pumpkin. I was glad to see these rather large MDF word signs again this year. So I'm going to take Gather and I'm going to do a light coat of my white chalk paint. I'm doing a careful job to not, as much as possible, get it to stay on the top and not go down the sides. I decided to add some wooden beads to the hanger for this sign. These I have just gathered from Amazon and then the smallest ones were from a sign that I took them off. So I have three different sizes here but just um, you can use whatever beads you want and then I'm going to put them on a piece of jute twine. I have these tiny ones, the medium size I painted with mineral and then I did some of the large ones with that lagoon paint. So this is the pattern for my beads and then I'm going to repeat that a second time on the other side of my string. Then just go ahead and once you've got knots tied, glue those down to the back of your sign and then once you let that dry, it'll be sturdy enough to be able to hang your sign. And now that everything is painted, we are ready to assemble our sign, glue the gather word on there. And then I realized I needed three tumbling tower blocks. I'm gonna paint these with the dark brown truffle chalk paint. These will be the stems for our three pumpkins and we'll let those dry. Here are my three pumpkins. I wanted to make them a little bit more dimensional, so I'm going to dry brush some of my white chalk paint on there just to, again, make them have a little bit more character and not be quite so flat. So go ahead and just dry brush the white as much or as little as you want on all three of your pumpkins. 
Then I'm gonna have one little bow on the stem of each of my pumpkins. So my orange pumpkin is going to have the black and white gingham. The teal pumpkin is going to have a little bow made with this burlap ribbon. And my gray pumpkin will have the orange and white gingham uh, ribbon also from Hobby Lobby. I decided to add a little bit more character to my pumpkins by using the jute covered um, or wire jute twine um, that you can get from Dollar Tree. So I made some curly cues, two for each of my pumpkins. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue my pumpkin halves to the bottom of my sign. Then we will add the stems and the little curly cues and finally our little bows that we created for each pumpkin. And here's the finished sign. I absolutely love the colors. You know I'm loving the orange and teal this year and the dark wood. And I just love how the beads add so much to the top of the sign as well. DIY number three is another fun one using some different items from Dollar Tree. Three of these die cut wood boxes, some strands of lights, three little pieces of wood and some letter stickers. So I am first working with my three pieces of wood here. Of course, you can use whatever you have on hand. I have three pieces here cut at nine inches, seven inches and five inches. And you can see I'm painting each piece with a different color of paint, orange on the bottom, white on the top. And then my middle one is going to be that orange with some white added again like I did on the previous project with one of my pumpkins, just making a lighter orange color for some contrast. So once these are fully painted, we will set those aside to dry and then move on to our little die cut uh, jack-o'-lantern boxes here that have that sliding piece on the back. So I'm going to paint one of these with the orange. I'm gonna do another one with that um, more muted orange color that we mixed. And then my third one, I'm going to use Lagoon, that teal color. Now coming back to our three pieces of wood, I am just using letter stickers that I had in my stash. Again, you could cut vinyl if you have a way to do so, or you can use paint markers to just write your words on here. But I'm just using a variety of fonts in my black stickers. I'm going to do pumpkins here on the bottom. And you know, if you don't have all caps, Use a mixture of caps and lowercase. That's what I did down here to write the word pumpkins. And here you can see my blocks say, I love my little pumpkins. So if you didn't already know, I have three children. Yeah, they're not quite so little anymore. They're all taller than me, but I am making this. My three boxes here are going to represent my three children. And just like I did with the foam pumpkins, I'm going to go ahead and add some character and dry brush some white chalk paint on all three of my pumpkin boxes. And then I did sand them just a little bit um, just to blend all the colors together. And I love how they turned out with the white dry brushing. Next, I'm going to paint four of these small wooden cubes from Dollar Tree with my truffle chalk paint. These I'm going to use as the little stems for my pumpkin boxes. 
you'll see I'm going to use two cubes for one of the pumpkins and then one each for the other two. Now, my two orange pumpkins are gonna be my two girls. I have girl, boy, girl. And so for my girls, I'm going to make crisscross bows that are gonna look like hair. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So I'm just using the burlap ribbon and then also the black and white gingham check from Dollar Tree and then also the orange and white gingham check that's a little bit narrower from Hobby Lobby. I decided to also use some more of this harvest plaid ribbon, but it is pretty wide. So what I'm doing here is I cut the length and then I cut the two wire edges off and then cut the ribbon in half. So I'm going to use this ribbon because I like the pattern, but we're going to use smaller pieces of it. So to make a crisscross bow, you start with your thickest ribbon on the bottom and then just cross over left, right, left, right, left, right, going all the way to your skinniest ribbon. And then you'll take a piece of jute twine that you will tie in a knot at the center. So there I have all my crisscrosses. There's my piece of jute twine, and you're just going to hold it in place while you tie that knot. When it starts to squish together like that, you can kind of manipulate it a little bit and then tie your final knot until you have the bow that you want. Like I said, my two orange pumpkins are gonna be my girls. So then I'm just hot gluing the bow that I made to the top of each of those orange pumpkins, making sure not to glue over where this sliding piece in the back can go up and down. Now coming back to my cubes, I did take two of the brown cubes and glue those together. And then I'm gonna glue those on top of my boy pumpkin, my teal blue, and then go ahead with the other two cubes and glue one onto the center of each of my bows for my orange pumpkins. I did then decide to add a couple leaves, burlap leaves to the top of my boy pumpkin. So just folding the burlap ribbon in half, I just cut out two leaves and then I'm just going to hot glue those to the center of my pumpkin just so it didn't look so bare at the top compared to my girls. So I think the pumpkins look super cute as is, but if you wanted to, you could take one of these battery powered small strands of 10 lights that you can find in the Halloween section at Dollar Tree. And I also got my batteries at Dollar Tree. And what you can do then once you have the batteries in is slide up the back part of your box. It may have painted shut a little bit, but that's okay, you can get it. And then just tuck the lights inside and then Keep the battery pack on the outside as you slide the back down, and then you'll be able to turn the lights on and off whenever you'd like. And this is how the whole project turned out together. Of course, you could just make the pumpkins or you could just make the blocks with the words, but I love them all together. I love my little pumpkins, my three kiddos. If you are new to my channel or stopping by for the first time, I hope you enjoy what you see here and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And I hope everyone will hit the bell and check your notifications. Some wonky things have been going on with notifications. So just make sure that your notifications are set to all so YouTube will notify you each time I upload a new video. DIY number four is a viewer request using two of these football shaped wreath forms, some clothes pins, and this clear trifle dish from the party section. So what I'm going to do first is take my clothes pins and I'm just trying to estimate how many I'm gonna need to go all the way around the trifle dish. I am going to take a part half that many clothespins because I'm getting two pieces out of each clothespin. 
Now I did take these two wreath forms out to the garage and I did spray paint them. They're kind of a green color. I spray painted them with an off white. And I'm gonna tell you this is the hardest part of the project right here is taking these zip ties from the hardware aisle at Dollar Tree and getting that first one on is the most difficult because you're trying to get these wreath forms to lay uh, flushly together. So once you start with the zip ties, it is a little bit easier and then I just tuck it inside once it's been trimmed. I'm gonna do three along this side that these two halves are meeting each other and then we will do the same on the other side of our footballs. Then we're going to take one final zip tie and we're gonna put it right up at the top of our cage. Now, you do need some metal cutting tool for this. I am gonna take that bottom section off of our football all the way around, and this is going to allow us to be able to change what goes inside this cloche. So again, kind of have to wiggle them around to make sure they are um, gonna stand up straight. And then coming back to our clothespins, I had spray painted them because it's faster with clothespins with a dark brown. I also spray painted the trifle dish and now I'm just dry brushing some dark gray. Again, if you don't like the colors that I chose, feel free to use whatever colors you want that will better match your style and your decor. I'm also dry brushing that elephant gray around the trifle dish and then we're going to do the same thing to our little cage, just trying to give it a little bit more of that rustic farmhouse look. Now using a mixture of E6000 and hot glue, I am taking my clothespin halves and I'm going to glue these around the outside of the trifle dish. This is just to add some wood, add some more dimension, a little bit more height to our project. And we're gonna get those straight by using one of the lines on the trifle dish. And we're just gonna glue these all the way around our, um, our dish. Now I'm also gonna take one of these metal buckets. This one was from Walmart and I'm going to spray paint this with a metal look. I'm gonna show you first a different way that you can use this um, seasonally. You can change out what goes inside. You can use a battery powered candle and just make it have a candle inside. Or you can go ahead and do seasonal decor, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the acorns and the pine cones back around this bucket, add some floral foam, some Spanish moss, and I'm going to put together a little pumpkin topiary. I have three more of those kind of felt pumpkins from Five Below. I'm going to use toothpicks to stack them together because they are foam inside. And I'm just going to stack them up orange, off-white, and then I'm gonna get the teal one up on the top using two more toothpicks. And to get the whole thing to stand up in the floral foam, I am going to use a bamboo skewer and then stack those other two pumpkins on top of the orange one. I decided to make a very simple crisscross bow just with the skinny burlap ribbon and the orange and white gingham. I've shown you now a couple times how to do this in this video, but just crisscross them, tie knots, and then cut off the excess jute twine. I'm going to just glue this to the very top of the cage and just to kind of give it a finished off look, just um, angle those burlap ribbons there and then we'll glue that up to the top and add a little fall flower. Now I didn't like how plain the bottom part was looking so I decided to take some more of that orange and white gingham ribbon and I'm just going to hot glue this all the way around 
right above that little um, indent that's on the outside of the clothespins there. So then go ahead and add what you'd like to the inside, set the top part that we made out of the football wreath inside, and there you go. And this could be made non-seasonal or can easily be changed for any and all seasons. DIY number five is going to be a fall decor using non-seasonal items. So I'm using four of these wood drawers and some poster letters from Dollar Tree along with a variety of fall scrap of papers from Hobby Lobby. So here I took four of these drawers and I'm using them as eight separate blocks, four large and four medium. First thing I'm gonna do, I decided to use again my Lagoon teal color but feel free to use any color that you'd like. And I'm gonna give all of my boxes one coat of this on all of the different surfaces. Once those are dry, I am just taking my ruler and measuring. Now, all of these boxes are not exactly the same size, but I decided to take five different patterns of scrap of paper and I'm going to cut four squares that are two and a half inches by two and a half inches. That's for the smaller boxes and four pieces that are two and three quarter by two and three quarter. That's for the larger boxes. Then just using some Mod Podge, I'm going to spread that on the, these are the tops of the boxes and then spritz some water on the square and get those on. So on the tops of my boxes, I did the orange and white polka dot on the larger ones and then the orange and brown polka dots on the smaller. So you can see I've got this beautiful orange and teal plaid and on these boxes going big, small, big, small, big, small, big, small, I'm going to use my poster letters to spell the word blessed. Then once those are on, I'm gonna flip all my boxes one time to the right. And I have this pretty pumpkin paper from Hobby Lobby. And this side is going to spell grateful. Then I'm gonna flip to the leaf side. And this side is going to spell thankful. And then I have one more side opposite of the tops. And it's just going to be a decorative fall paper. So I hope that made sense. I used five different papers. Each side spells something except for the polka dots that are on the top and on the fourth side of each block. Here's the grateful and I showed you thankful and you can see blessed in the thumbnail of this video. DIY number six is a pumpkin truck 3D sign. I'm using again one of these smaller wood trucks some Scrabble letters and this sign that I believe measures about eight by eight. So once I removed the 3D image that was sticking up, I'm going to go ahead and do a light layer of white, mainly around the edges because I don't want any of that green to show up when I Mod Podge the fall plaid paper onto the center of the sign. So go ahead and do that white and then let that dry completely. Then taking some Mod Podge, don't use as much as I just poured in there. I end up having to take a bunch of it out. Then spray some water on your paper and then we're going to stick that down, rub out any bubbles and then let that dry. While our Mod Podge is drying, we're gonna come to our sign. You can see I broke off this second truck, but I kept the little pieces that um, will raise this out and I'm using my Lagoon. I want to paint my truck with the teal color. Again, modify this for whatever colors you want. And I decided to just give the whole thing a base coat of the teal. And then using some of my paint markers, I'm going to go around the tires with black and also do some other detailing with the black 
Then I'm going to use my silver paint marker to do the hubcaps and the bumper. Then I'm gonna take my dark brown paint marker and go ahead and paint the little wood slats here for the back of our truck. Then once all the paint on our truck is dry, I'm going to put some hot glue on those two bracing pieces and we're gonna glue this um, pretty much in the center of our sign there so it is three-dimensional coming out from the back of the sign. Then taking some Scrabble tiles, I spelled out the word pumpkins, and we're just going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom of each one, and we're gonna glue these right there at the base of the frame, going all the way across the bottom. Then taking a couple of the foam pumpkins from Dollar Tree, this one I cut in half so that it would glue flat and fit in the back of the truck there. And then the small tiny little orange one, we're just gonna put some glue on there and stick that in the back of the truck as well. Then to give that last finishing touch to this project, I'm gonna make one more crisscross bow. This time I'm going to dovetail that plaid ribbon and this will be our base. And then I'm also going to use some of the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. And I believe I'm gonna use one other gingham ribbon as well. Okay, I used two more, the black and the orange. Again, take a piece of jute twine and tie that in a knot across the center as it kind of squishes together there in the middle to make your very simple crisscross bow. The thing that makes it a little hard is that burlap ribbon because it's a little stiff. But as you're tying your knot, you can go ahead and fluff out your ribbon to however you like it. You can see I fluffed it a little too much because then when I um, go to put it at the top of my sign, it's covering up the truck. So then just, you know, move it up a little bit. And then when you have it how you like it, go ahead and hot glue that to the top of your sign. And then I'm just gonna add a tiny little acorn there to, not acorn, I did that last time, tiny little pine cone to the center to finish off the sign. And I just think this is so, so cute. I love all the texture and all the dimension to this project. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please, if you enjoyed this video and love budget home decors, please give this video a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that this is something people are wanting to watch. And make sure you comment in the comments below which of these projects was your favorite. Take care.